already hot and sweaty and all I've done is get my bike out. So um, it does always impress me that when you can just get it out of the packet, chuck it, pack it, get it out of its bag and everything is ready and it's literally less than five minutes to get everything on including like putting the GoPro on there and everything. So uh, well impressed. So I am parked up right by the Tarka Trail. So even though the fishing looks lovely and all of this stuff, first of all, I'm going to get my body moving because I've not done much for a while. Um, so I'm going to go, I've kind of pinned a cafe on the Tarka Trail. It's like a stop off point. So it's a bit of a biker's thing as well with all the bike shops and stuff there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to head to there, which is 12 miles away, which means it's going to be a 24, 25 mile round trip, but it's mostly flat. So we shall see how, uh, how we get on. Um, if I get knackered, I'm coming back. Simples. Um, or I'll stop for a coffee and then come back. So yeah, exciting stuff. Let's see what I can get up to. See ya, Bumble. Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? I'm just loving. Four minutes to go till I get to uh, to the cafe and uh, what a beautiful trail this is such a mixed trail you've had seaside and harbours and houseboats and bridges and old railway stations that you have to get up and walk through instead of cycling through honestly it's just absolutely stunning and beautiful so yeah uh, I'm looking forward to stopping for a bit though I'm letting my batteries dicta dictate when I stop and I'm down to halfway now, so I figured that if I just do the other four minutes ride to the cycle centre, then I can have a rest and that should do me till I get back. I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? In 200 yards, you will arrive at your destination. So I made it to Torrington. Uh, I did notice as I got my bike out of the bag this morning, which you see my bike here, um, the bell had snapped off and the bell was in the bag and I've only realised going along this trail that you really need a bell there's only so much shouting ding ding at people as you go past will get you so I decided to treat myself to a new one because Torrington Cycle Centre don't you know and this lovely chap here is fitting it on my bike for me because I couldn't get the um the wrappy thing for the old one off what an absolute star 5 99 for a new bell as well cute day so I've got a new bell. You ready? How cool is that? So there we go. And you know they say it's always quicker to get back than it is to get there. Well there you go. This is my return journey. and hurt in places that you only see on OnlyFans. 25 minutes to go, so I'm halfway back, but... Mm. Mm. You see my new bell? Oh. How cute is that? Fits perfectly. Ready? It. 
and I'm not dead yet. Can't put my bike away yet though. So I'll have to wait to be able to put my bike away. Um, however, that is not going to stop me going in, getting a big cold drink and some proper food, I think. Time for refueling. What have I done? 23.47 miles in two and a half hours. And that included a bit of a chat to some ladies that were selling raffle tickets, like you do. I flattened up my rider battery. <laughs> uh, it's like 24 miles or something. I don't actually remember the last time I charged it, which means John probably would have charged it. So uh, considering I don't know how long it's been sat unused, uncharged, whatever, it's done really, really well. Um, I just love this bike. I saw three others on the uh, on the trail this morning and everyone's like morning are you do you like your bike yes yeah, brilliant it's like this it, this little my rider excitement club um so i get my ch battery charged up ready for the next one so i don't have to worry about that um i know it's this popular place and it's tight for parking but it does sometimes get me if i didn't have a sliding door on this van i wouldn't have been able to get in on either side um which is a bit annoying. Uh, I understand getting my door wide open to put my bike back in again is a little bit prissy for me to expect that. Um, but then there's pedestrians getting in cars, disabled people getting in cars, you know, they're just parked straight for goodness sake. So this is the good thing about the My Rider and the EcoFlow, you see. So EcoFlow is being charged at the minute from my solar. And then I have snuck my bike in. So it's so tiny. I can get it just in this little space here and uh, giving it a good charge, ready for next time. So first, we switch on the AC. And there we can see. Then, we switch on the coffee. Right, I have my coffee. Coffee's always a good thing. We'll start with coffee, even though it is roasting and I am shiny because it is that hot. I've still got to go for my coffee. But honestly, though, I don't know what I'd do without this EcoFlow. It's literally powering my entire life in this van. It's amazing. Not only do I get coffee, but I've got that little plug-in pan that I use and I can make me hot water for uh, washing the pots and washing my face and things like that, as well as cooking food in. Late night munches, there's your toaster. Use the toaster. This thing powers that toaster so well. It does toast so quickly, it's unbelievable. When it gets low on power, I can either plug it in so I charge it while I'm driving or I plug the solar panel in. I've got a 220 watt solar panel and that keeps it topped up nicely. I can plug my van into the EcoFlow and charge it so I can have the solar panel charging the EcoFlow and the van taking all that power out and uh, charging the battery in the van so I have make sure my fridge and my water pump and my lights and everything are working. It is the biggest lump of in-between power for everything and you can move it anywhere. Say charge my bike, charge my laptop, uh, charge all of the things that I need from it. It literally runs my hairdryer, runs my straighteners. It's amazing and I absolutely love it to pieces. It's a, it's a massive change for such a small van like this because there's just no room to put any of all the other stuff. You know, I've no in inverter room, um, but it's also Mandy proof. You know, you look at it and you see the numbers on the front and that tells you how much power you've got left. You can see what's switched on and what's switched off so you can make sure you're not wasting power. And uh, it's easy enough to do via the app as well. So I could be somewhere, have the van plugged in so I know it's doing that, but know that I'm going to need to cook some food later. So I need to make sure it doesn't run all the way down so I can monitor it from a pub and then switch it off if I, uh, if I see the power going too low. They've literally thought of anything to make it flexible and usable. What do you need? What more do you need? 
I don't know. Maybe plug it into the engine and make my van go faster. That would do. Another epic salad this time. Give me some energy back. Greek salad, mint dressing, and some wraps so I can make some sandwichy wrap things out of it all. Oh, starving. Well, as you can see, the wind has picked up so much, there's no chance of me doing any fishing unless I seriously want to hurt myself. And of course, the fact that you need water and the tide has gone out is really bad sign for starting fishing right now. So I'm going to make the most, have a chilled afternoon, get some bits done in the van, enjoy the sunshine for a little bit, because tomorrow I'm off to Barnstable. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the quite a simple video. Take care, guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.